welcome back. So I'm going to start another playlist based around a new purchase that my wife and I made for ourselves for Christmas present um, 2018. We bought ourselves a Cruelty CR-10 S5. Um, the S5, if you're not familiar with it, stands for the 500 by 500 by 500 build plate. Now, because I'm an American, I can't metric. And so, when I bought it, I was like, man, that sounds like a big build plate. That's the one I want. 500 by 500 is actually a big build plate. And a big build plate means that you need some place to put it. And it takes up a lot of space because 500 is big. Metric system confusing for me, apparently. So, if you watch the first part of the intro, you realize that one of the other things that I had to contend with, in addition to the fact that the printer was much larger than I really expected it to be, because once again I can't math good, um, we didn't really have any place to put it. Uh, we have one table in our house that was big enough and we use that table for working on cosplay and stuff like that, so we didn't want to take it up. The other problem that we had is this. This is Bellatrix. Bellatrix is about a year old. And, as you probably saw from the previous video, she is into everything all the time. Uh, it was a pretty good guess on my part that kittens plus 3D printers was going to end up being messy for everybody involved. So, we needed an enclosure. Uh, needed some place to put the printer, and we needed some place to keep the printer safe while it was printing. Uh, so, I built the enclosure for it. Uh, it is a combination of steel, mostly bed frames and scrap angle iron that we were able to salvage from here and there and half inch particle or plywood so i started this project in the same place most people start projects i took a bunch of measurements and laid out a basic design of sort of what i was looking for with what i needed uh, had a bunch of eighth inch thick half inch by inch and a half and by inch and a half angle stock I was going to use for a different project but since I had it and I was ready for this one I used this and a combination of some scrap bed frame railing that I had. So I measured the uprights, cut them to length and then cut several of the bed rail pieces uh, to the appropriate sections that I needed for the base printer stand and the two shelves that I had also kind of had in mind when I started this project uh, to put the control unit and all of the filament and miscellaneous tools and stuff like that. Once I knew for sure what sizes I needed, I cut everything to the appropriate size for the entire project uh, and then laid it out on the floor and I started with the two sides. Uh, just. Squared everything up, stuck it together, and started at the top and the bottom and the middle shelf. I figured this would help control you know, material warpage and stuff like that from welding, and also help give me a solid structure to, to start from. And once I had everything laid out and tack welded and checked for square, uh, went through and solid welded the, the entire sides. Uh, then laid the other side out right beside it and just duplicated it. That way I was sure that I had two identical pieces. After I finished bumbling around my garage for a few minutes and knocking everything over, I finally managed to get everything clamped together uh, at the appropriate distances so that I could weld the side panels or front panel, front and back panels on uh, and get the entire frame welded up. I then gave everything a good coat of rattle can primer and then went through and gave it another good coat of a black enamel. Uh, it, it's the same random Rust-Oleum stuff that I use for everything else. I then turned the entire frame upside down and drilled a bunch of holes for the bottom shelf. Uh, my intent was to cast, attach the casters to the shelf instead of to the metal. Uh, I just figured it would make it easier to change things if I ever needed to. Uh, and then just drilled out the holes for the casters and attached the casters with quarter 20 hardware. After that, I started laying out the rest of the panels, um, 
got them measured out and started cutting. And while I was at it, I went ahead and I broke all of the cardinal rules of using a power saw. I'm wearing baggy clothing. I'm cutting towards myself with unsupported tools, cutting in awkward positions. Just, just I'm, I'm, sometimes I'm dumbfounded that I'm still alive. Do as I say, not as I do, boys and girls. Once I finally decided to stop trying to destroy myself, I finished making all the cuts and started laying out the area I was going to route out for the side windows. Uh, both of the sides are going to have plexiglass windows in them so that I can look in and check on prints while they're printing without having to open the doors and stuff like that. With the pattern laid out, I partially drilled the corners. Um, I didn't show it, but what I did was I drilled about halfway through, and then flipped the panel over and drilled from the other side so that I didn't tear up the wood when I did that. Uh, and then went through, cut it out with the jigsaw, and then used the router to clean up the edges. Uh, I'm not a big jigsaw person, uh, but I'd never used a router before, so I didn't know what it was or wasn't capable of. And so this was my first experiment with that. Uh, actually, great, amazing tools. Uh, really looking forward to finding excuses to use this one some more. I traced the pattern from the first one onto the second, uh, pulled the top panel off and squared up all the lines, made sure that everything was clean so that I was going to be able to figure out where it was, and then repeated the process. Having a little more confidence in my routering skills and a little better idea of what the tool can and can't do, uh, I skipped straight over the jigsaw and went straight to cutting the panels out with the router. I drilled the holes and then just put up a fence to make sure that the lines were nice and straight and then just cut between the holes. With everything cut down and routed out, I started drilling a whole bunch of holes. I think I went through three or four pilot bits and at least two or three of the bits that I was going to use to, to drill out. This stuff, particularly the bed angle, is just hard as rock. Um, then put the top panel on, drilled it all out, and attached it. Uh, once I had the top panels on, I started working on the sides. I clamped the first side piece to the frame assembly and then drilled the holes out, uh, attached it in multiple spots. Uh, this plywood was not particularly heavy, but I wanted it to be nice and solid. And I'm going to line this with um, insulation, so I wanted to make sure everything was nice and tight. Since I needed to kitten-proof this structure, I had to put doors on it. I cut a bunch of pieces of angle from the bed, bed rails, uh, and then using a combination of glue, screws, and the aforementioned brackets, uh, fabricated doors. I wasn't originally planning on putting doors on it, and it dawned on me that 3D printers probably don't fare very well against kittens. Now, you're probably asking yourself, why would he build the doors like that? Well, the answer is because... I didn't know enough about the 3D printer when I started building this stand and did not realize that the table moved and not the gantry, so I needed to allow a little bit more room for the table to move at the fullest. Anyways, back to the build. Uh, cut a bunch of pieces from the from just random sheet metal or sheet aluminum that I had, um, bead rolled it, and I'm going to use those pieces to hold the plexiglass in so that I don't have to drill through the plexiglass. That way I've got to replace it. It's not a big problem. I then laid out the dimensions for the top and drilled out the filament hole. My intent is to mount the filament rolls on top of the printer and not in the inside. So I drilled out the filament hole and then I cut out a larger hole that I can hook dryer ducting up to. So eventually I can run this to the window that's beside where the printer is going to go. And like I said, it's going to be sealed with insulation and stuff like that. So in theory, I'm hoping that it'll reduce any sort of risks that I get from ABS or any of those things. Some more of that random blue-gray paint that we have that went someplace else, I don't know where. Uh, and I coated all of the boards, the tops, the bottoms, the sides, and everything. Got everything painted but the doors. I then lined this entire enclosure. Uh, any place that wood and metal were going to meet, I lined with this weather stripping stuff. Uh, both hoping to contain heat to make it a little more efficient in the enclosure and to help keep anything that might be harmful fume wise or particle wise out of the house and into the enclosure and like I said eventually I'll vent it outside. A couple of these cheap LED clip-on lights that I picked up from Lowe's uh, with a little switch that can let me turn them off and on and it keeps everything nice and bright in there for when I actually want to see what's going on. Uh, in retrospect I should have mounted the switch on the outside of the enclosure but I didn't and I might change that someday.
Uh, and after that, I started putting the panels on. I poked holes in the insulation and then put the hardware through, got the hardware in there, torqued everything down, did the best I could to keep the base as level as possible. I mean, there's leveling feet on it, but uh, eventually I'll move to a nicer platform, I hope. Uh, got all of the front sides, tops, and everything mounted, but again, but the doors. And then started working on the hinges for the doors. I uh, drilled them out. Uh, Patched them. I didn't want to weld them. I wanted them to be flexible and changeable in case I didn't like the dual design. Alright, reattached all the hardware, made sure that everything was in its appropriate place, put the plexiglass windows in, took the plastic off, or took the plastic off and then put the plexiglass windows in, uh, glued magnets to the back of the light switches so that I could attach them to the steel uh, frame and keep them up out of the way and then move the printer back in and put the last panel on So I've already started upgrading the printer uh, the I've added cable chains that I've printed from Thingverse everything so far everything that I, I I've designed one or two little cosplay projects myself, but uh, so far most of the stuff I downloaded from Thingverse um, It's got a BL touch on it um, It is a pet's fang um, cooling system and a Nerd Forge modified filament guide. It's a, this this model has the filament sensor in it, and because the filament comes in from the top at such an angle, I kind of had to modify the, the the thing I downloaded so that I could get it to sit off a little bit of an angle, uh, and that way it feeds the filament down there uh, horizontally, and then goes into the filament sensor. And I haven't tested that as well as I'd like to yet, but little things at a time. Uh, it has the squash ball feet uh, really made a big difference on silencing it up. Uh, I thought that that was a that was a big improvement. Here we go again Bella. No. Anyways, anybody ever wonders why this channel is called Bad Kitty, Bad Kitty Creations? That's why. Have a good day.